G'day, I'm Andrew Datto and this is Subaru's Great Australian Detour. This time around we're doing something very special and yet entirely normal. I'm going camping. I mean, you've camped or you're planning on going camping, but this time it's a little bit different. So I'm taking the outback and I've got something out the back and we're going into the outback. Now what could be more Australian than that? And I'm taking two mates with me, Subaru Ambassadors Cam Merchant and Courtney Atkinson, and they're towing as well. The plan is to go west across the great state of New South Wales all the way to Mungo. That's the plan. And I love it when a plan comes together. And yet, well, let's just see if that plan comes together. On this great Australian detour, we set out with the morning sun at our backs and head west for adventure. It's a Subaru road train with just about everything. Caravans, mates, history, and of course, three Subies doing the work. Like the start of something special, what does happen when an outback, a forester, and a crosstrek tow caravans? As it turns out, a lot. Expecting the unexpected, the plan is Mungo National Park. We're heading west, go west young man, across the great state of New South Wales on the Mitchell Highway. Narrow mind, then never tire, which is a funny name for a place because it makes you think, don't get tired. And then into Ningen and it's long and flat and straight and long and flat. And I love the, just look at that train line and the fences and you wonder how they got made. We're heading for Ningen and then ultimately Mungo. It's a beautiful drive, really, really, a great chance to think. Or a chance to just drive, to take it all in and let the rest of the world disappear behind you. Oh wow, I've been chasing this train line for hundreds of k's and now I finally get to stop and cross it. Mm. Ningen. Is it Ningen or is it Ningen? Ning and it was named after a motorbike. Ning 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 ning. Where are you from? Ning and I'll find out. I will find out. In the Bogan Shire, um, the Bogan River comes through here, and there is a big thing. There's a big thing. That's where I'm meeting Courtney Atkinson and Cam Merchant, my travel companions. Courtney's a former triathlete and dual Olympian. Now he's an endurance athlete, and he does it all around the world. And you may know Cam from Maths, where he found love. Now he's got you for life and into men's health. We've organised to meet in Ningen, an 1800s gold rush town probably more famous these days as the edge of the outback and the Bogan River. <laughs> and there's this, the big Bogan. Am I home? Is this my spiritual homeland? Possibly not. It's actually the centre of Ningen. And this is where I organised to meet Cam and Courtney, but they're not here yet. He is actually Bogan, the Shire. It's an indigenous term for the head man of the area. Uh, so I might go and find someone who can tell me more about this spot. Ningen, beautiful town. And I can share that with the boys. Could be a golf course. Just, I saw a sign. It's another sign. Ningen Golf Club is nothing if not unique. A local favourite, sand greens complement the grass fairways and it's all hidden from view by the levee. The president is Dave Reed. Is it Ningen or is it Ningen? Ningen. Ningen. Yeah. That's not a two stroke, it's not Ningen. No. Ning. <laughs> <laughs> right, and what do you love, like you've been here your whole life, what do you love about Ningen? Uh, laid back lifestyle Yeah. is the best thing and um, very casual to you. Yeah. Good to you. Um, good people. And the river. Hey, and what about the golf course? So this is different, isn't it? This is the Sanskrit, and you've got someone practicing. Yeah, we got the old local legend, or two of them there actually, Dick and Dave. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rosie's our, um, he's been our pinnacle of the club yeah. for a lot of years now. He was our uh, New South Wales Sand Green champion two years ago and has won numerous opens. Okay. So yeah. Maybe we should have a quick chat to him and get a lesson. 
<laughs> Lesson in chipping on sand. Okay, good idea. That's the secret to Royal Ningen's success. It's a sand scrape. The greens are sand. And New South Wales champ Dave Rose shows how you literally scrape a runway from your ball to the hole once you get to the green. It's fun. And good scrapes can lead to good putts. From the bush track to the big bogan, and hopefully my travel companions. You made it! Dad, great to see you. Yeah, mate. you good to see you, mate. How was the drive? It was good. Yeah. It was delightful. All right, now we've got a festival of Subarus and wagons. You're in the. Oh, mate, I'm in the nifty blue cross track. Right, and the, I see. You've color coded. Color -coded. Very nice. And Courtney, you're Myself in. Myself as well. I'm in the white, the white Forester with the Lark. Yeah. But we know who's Bosch, right? Because. You got the outback. I've got the turbo. All the power. I've got the turbo. It's good. So it's really good. Um, I owe you an apology because I sledged you in your absence because I thought you were late, but I got my daylight savings time wrong. Oh. Um, we got a lot on. We're heading to Mungo. Before we do that, what is this? When you look at it, who does it remind you of? Well, it's definitely not me. No. I'm thinking. Mate, I might as well go and grab the hat. Yeah. <sighs> Queenslander. We'll take a break. And then it's Mungo. Mungo. Good stuff. Good to see you. Great to see you, buddy. I love a country road and I love a country radio station and the weather, which, as you might notice, is beginning to turn. So as much as I promised the kids in the back seat who aren't actually there, a trip to Mungo, there's a chance we won't go there. So we might have to change the plan. And I love that about road travel, that you can change what you're doing quite easily. For now though, we're on a definite detour plan. Ningen is really a halfway point, so it's a way stop as opposed to a detour. So it'd be good to detour from there. And as you'd expect, most of the properties around here are family owned. So you, you can't just rock in there. It's not like someone comes to your place and goes, oh, g'day Barry, mind if I fish in your bathtub? It's not like that, but there is a place it's called Kalubri Station. It's a beautiful detour, a lovely road, 30 k's out of Ningen, and it's a farm stay, but with a difference, but it's still in Bogan Shire. I was gonna say Bogan County. It's still in Bogan Shire. So, you know, make of that what you will. There's only one Bogan here, and that's the Bogan River. Kalubri Station, 30 minutes from Ningen Town, is a working sheep station with something for everyone. Angie, I feel like you are literally the embodiment of the reason to detour. So on the edge of the outback, Bogan, <laughs> right, you're a Bogan. <laughs> and it's full blown luxury accommodation. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, look, I, I think it's um, something quite unexpected and um, really different. And, and that's, you know, part of the, um, the attraction to coming, you know, off the, off the beaten highway. <laughs> yeah, but you're a big part of the difference as well. Like you, XIT. Yes. You can now cook. <laughs> You know, for hundreds and hundreds. I try, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how did you, how did you end up here? Oh, look, I um, met my husband uh, down in Melbourne, and uh, when I was an IT consultant, and moved here, and sort of fell into cooking by accident. Right. And, um, very and he's a passionate farmer. about it. Yeah, he's he's a farmer, agribusiness banker, um, and the property's been in the family for about 145 years. So, wow. yeah, a lot of history, um, and obviously, you know, incredible place to to raise food and and serve, you know, what we what we grow here. Right, and it is a working farm, full working sheep yeah, farm. Yeah, absolutely. So usually, sort of 12 and a half thousand sheep, and wow. we try to do about four and a half, five thousand acres of cereal crops. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the seasons don't go with us. We're completely dry land, so whatever falls from the yeah. sky. For, for that, for that is farming, and then yeah. also for the accommodation. Like you've got the beautiful old buildings. So obviously these are, you know, easily 100 years old. Yeah. So most of them from the late 1800s. Yeah. Um, a lot of them built from timber, sort of hand chiselled on the property. Yeah. Um, some a little worse for wear, which is, you know, why we're opening ourselves up to tourism to try and, you know, warrant the work to to rebuild these okay. buildings and really showcase them. And then you've got that. It's a bit different. <laughs> the draw. I'm fully <laughs> drawn to it. Like that's the luxury, isn't it? That's yeah. the, the spot. Yeah, look, we were very wary of um, not trying to replicate the old. So I wanted the accommodation to be something that's quite new and modern and very different. Um, so the old buildings really were showcased in their sort of original states. Okay. Well, as I say, it is definitely the reason to detour. Yeah, this fantastic. is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, really good. There's much to love about the ethos of Kalubri, a luxurious foodie farm stay with room for weddings and sustainability in their heart. Hello. I think what's really lovely about this place is that 
it's their sense of preserving history, which I think is really, really important. So like the Shearer's quarters or the woolshed weren't that much better than this. And now they're stunning buildings that are used with guests. And then on the flip side of that is this all new luxury creation. So you really see the difference, but it's maintaining things like this that are really important. Goodbye, goodbye. You see, poking around the old stuff makes you really appreciate what's new and what's good about it. So this is the perfect flip side to the old stuff. It's beautiful, luxurious shipping container units with a lap pool. Imagine having three other couples coming here for a weekend. Should stay here and, and I'm, I mean, the caravan's great. <laughs> no, no, the caravan's good. Of course, it's far too early to think about sleeping and there's too much to do. There is a bit of a secret here. It's called moon bathing. And you come out to the edge of the outback and you have the whole thing all to yourself. Dado! Hello, mate. The locals gave us a hot tip. Get down here early to beat the crowds. Come join us, mate. He does have a point. It's pretty spectacular. It could be a once in a lifetime thing. So look, I'll leave them to it. We'll have a break. I'll jump in the Bogan River. Too good not to bathe in. And I should have got here earlier. Potential change of plans. So just contact the boys. Pretend it's a CB radio, it's not walkie talkie. CQ, CQ, this is uh, the Dadinator in the outback looking for a dual Olympian and a manly cricket champion. Settle down on there up top. <laughs> you found someone from Beijing and London at least. Jordy, how are you going there, Mr. Manly? You've got Manly, mate. How's it, things looking up there? It looks like the weather's turning for Mungo. So is there anywhere, I don't know, say within a 500, 600k radius, you would like to go? Have you boys heard of Lightning Ridge? Yes. Historic little opal mining gem. OK. Yes, we could, yeah, well, yeah, that sounds good. What about you, Courtney? Yeah, I've heard of this little place called White Cliffs, right? And uh, I believe there's no White Cliffs there, but they do have opals. And what I'm keen to see is this underground motel. All right, OK, so Lightning Ridge or White Cliffs. I'm going to still hope, cross my fingers for Mungo. Let's reconvene in an hour or so. Sounds like a plan, Dada. Love it, Daddy Fox. Go get him. See you, buddy. Dada, need it, guys. There is something about heading west with a heart full of hope and a head full of doubt. Courtney reckons the long road soothes him, Cam's eyes up for adventure. As we head across the third flattest place on earth, you hope to see something, and you will. More sky here than just about anywhere. Val Reynolds, not Mungo, but almost. And it's all we've got. Well done, gents. We've made it almost. I know the plan was to get to Mungo today. This is Bell Rannell, so it's the gateway to Mungo, and there's still some issues with the weather. But having got here, we've circled the way. This is just the best setup. How was the first go at caravanning? I thought it was an absolute dream. I mean, if you told me the Outback was going to provide wild, live family of emus, I'm here for it. Are you joking? No. Did why you? <laughs> Do you know how far west we've travelled? You did not tell me there's live emus. Like, that's amazing. The, the yeah. outback has provided. I think it's amazing we own, oh, and actually you saw kangaroos because you've got the super eyes. True. I've got a box trailer at home that I take around and I thought, right from the beginning, how hard could this be? But it, along the way, everything surprised me. All right, so when you say right from the beginning, do you mean the actual hitching of car to trailer? Is that what you mean? I mean, literally when I got the jockey wheel, and started trying to work out, get it on the car. Yeah. And then I jumped in. The first thing I did was actually look for someone to help me reverse. Yeah. And then you forget about the technology in these cars, right? Or you remember the technology in these cars, reversing camera. There's actually a little red arrow on the screen. Yeah. You just put that straight over the tow ball. Bang, off There's you go. Crazy. Done by myself. And I was told about this the cradle that uh, crosses over. If you know, it happened and the trailer popped off, it catches it, it's all about safety, you can get off the road nice and safe. Yeah, it's good. Other little simple tricks that I thought was the wires and just making sure the brakes work. It's like me riding bikes. Yeah. Sometimes things are just meant to go together and the one thing that I've noticed when we've been travelling is all the genuine Subaru accessories just work together. Not only safety, you know, the, the 
the cameras and the um, tow ball accessories, but it's all made to work together. And the big thing that was when we are coming down off the mountains, and you got that electronic brake control. Off the, at the Blue Mountains? Blue Mountains? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When we, of course it's the Blue Mountains. We're yeah. in New South Wales. Oh my God. I keep thinking I'm in Queensland, but <laughs> we, I know it's where we are. Queensland. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, yeah, so when we come off the Blue Mountains, that electronic brake controller for the, uh, the campers, yeah. amazing. Like if you get in trouble, you can just yeah. finger on it, it's pull you. A huge difference. Going back to the very beginning, I was surprised about the technical aspect of towing, like the weights and things like that. Can I tell you a secret? I, I thought you just put it on and off you go. Well, I know, but no, definitely not. So, you know, every car has specifications of what they're allowed to tow, right? The weights. So you've got to get the weight of your caravan and then you get your weight of the car and then the things that go in the van, stuff that goes in the car, put the two together and it's still got to be within your car's specifications. It's like if you've got, I don't know, roof racks and they're rated to 60 kilos, you wouldn't put something 100 kilos up there because it would just be just unsafe. So that's the way it works with a caravan as well and if you've got any doubts you talk to your dealer it's that simple it's common sense common sense get you and that's also you've got to check your height of your van as well for low bridges and things like that yeah when you're going under them Go yeah. the camp. all you're worried about is the macca's drive-through you just forget sometimes that you've got anything behind you and you look in the mirror and go oh, i'm being chased no you don't <laughs> but you know what i mean yeah so look here's the deal with the we've got good news and bad news for you right okay Chuck us the bad news. The bad news is Mungo might not open whilst we're away because of all that rain they've had. Okay. It might not. And what's the good news? The good news is that we're together. We're in Balranald. This is one of the most historic places in Australia. Lots to, and it's beautiful. So if it doesn't work out there, there's a stack of things to do here, including fishing. Hey, and a good good night around the campfire never hurts. Yeah, I've never seen anyone look less inspired about fishing. So we don't have to fish, <laughs> but we've got great other things to look at as well. So anyway, it's good to be here. Well done. Great drive today. As tempting as it is to blow through small country towns, stopping in places like Balranald, a couple of hours south of Mungo, is well worth the effort. It's a big history. Lots of it saved in an old car dealership, and Vic has got the keys. Vic, I feel like Bal Reynolds got a stack of secrets. As for this place, how do you fit in here? You're the curator? I'm one of the curators. There's Peter, Cole, Jacker and myself. Yeah. And uh, we're just looking after it. Okay. And we can't seem to get young people to come in and help. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's with the young people. <laughs> it feels like Bal Reynolds got a lot of firsts. I know this is the only two-scale replica of this plane in the world. In the world, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But other things happen here that you know, for the very first well, time. For the very first time. And it's, you've got them. And we've got the number one out there for the, uh, of the lifter from the hospital bed. Okay. And we've got photographs of the first truck where they have two engines in it. Here? Here. Oh, we haven't got the truck, man. I said photographs. Okay, you did. It nearly yeah. tricked me. Right, well, this was made by Ralph Woods for his wife to get her in, help her in and out of bed. And uh, then he made one for the hospital bed up here. This Ralph Woods, this is the first one ever this made. This is the first one. And this is the first one. Yep, this is the first one with that little plate there. And he adjusted it by that. And so, so this went into hospitals literally around the world. Yeah, this was when he made one for every hospital bed here. And, and then he wrote to every major hospital in Australia. Yeah. And he told them what it was for. And he never patented it. Oh no. He gave it away. And it's so clever because it's like highly adjustable. This goes, it's got pins up here that. Can and it be a bit just move, so it yep. can move all the way around? Move all the way around. So this Ralph Woods was pretty special, wasn't he? He was pretty special. It's an eclectic historic collection. Birkin Wills, Kingsford Smith, trucks, shearing, and it's all funded by recycled bottles. Do consider stopping in Balranald. You might even stay. As old as lots of this stuff is, this is a modern history. Now, Balranald is on the doorstep of Mungo, which has an indigenous history that is old as time itself. And it's a story that should be learned. The roads to Mungo feel like an adventure. It's been a wrestle with the weather and a very real chance we'll miss out, which is not a defeat. Storm clouds lurk as the road dries its way back to dusty and the fact we're going to make it does feel like a victory. Scrub and thistles give way to red dirt, and we are on for Mungo. Ranger Tanya 
help set the scene. Tanya, I feel like I've fallen into a trap with Mungo, thinking that the Mungo man and Mungo woman are the big story here, but there's so much more than that, isn't there? Yeah, there's lots of big story here because it, you know, it tells that history of the past. And um, when I walk out onto the walls with the visitors, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to see because every time the wind blows or it rains, there's always something new exposed out yeah. there. Sometimes I feel the people here from the past and when the wind's blowing, you get this whisper in the wind. It's quite incredible and, you know, um, I see the past um, always coming into the future. Is what I see. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing us. No worries. Beautiful start to the day. I can't stop thinking about how Tanya said this is a brilliant time to be here after the rains. And when you look here at Red Top Lookout, you can see the channels of where the rains come through, There's some kangaroo tracks down there. And you know that in a couple of days, it'll be dusty again and the wind will come and reveal more stories. And with the stories, she said the dreaming stories here are just terrific. And there are certain times for certain stories, like the, how the man got in the moon, but this is not the time for that. This is the emu time and it's all in the sky about the male emu and when he lies down, that's the time to gather the eggs. Then the egg goes in and he raises, look, I'll do the story complete injustice. That's why you've got to come and come a bunch of times for a bunch of different stories. But it is quite spectacular. A day, a week, how long is long enough to absorb a place like this? Luckily, we're at the beginning, though we're also at the end. I didn't think we would get to this beautiful point in Mungo, right? I thought the weather would beat us. That's both of us. Yeah, okay, good. Two versus... Yeah, I'm, I'm in there as well. Okay, good. So now that we're here, does it meet your expectations? Well, I had no expectations at all. So the New South Wales Outback exceeded every expectation possible. Yeah, maybe that's the way to travel. No, Ex no, I, I had expectations. <laughs> as far west I can get away from the cities, yeah. this is my happy place. Right. I get relaxed. Yeah. I'm happy. What about you, Dad? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, actually, in the red dirt, and you, you feel like you're doing something really special. Um, and that, like things like the kangaroos and the emus, there's 300 emus on Lake Mungo, don't look at me like that. <laughs> I was only joking. So the, the emus are beautiful. So I think, why don't you leave us here while we explore Mungo? That's the first thing to do. The next thing is to think about Subaru's next Great Australian Detour. Oh, where, yeah. where could we go? With boats. Do you want to tow boats? Boats and wakeboards. Oh, bogan. Bogan. That's it. 